I try to define philosophy in terms of its typical object. However, philosophy didn't really have a specific object immediately. So I took the indirect road of taking a look at the different branches of philosophy. Metaphysics was about the ultimate being of things, what are people really and what are tables really. Epistemology is about acquiring knowledge about this reality. And ethics is about the question, how should we behave towards people? However, one might wonder what the difference here is between philosophy and science. Take a look at epistemology. Aren't there branches of real science which are about thinking? Psychology, for instance, that is about thinking. Moreover, cognitive psychology is really about how people acquire knowledge about things. So, what is the difference between the philosophical approach here in epistemology and the scientific approach, cognitive psychology? Why do we need this strange discipline of philosophy in addition to those decent sciences which have proved that they are valuable, such as cognitive psychology. However, philosophers will reply that cognitive psychology is a description of how people acquire beliefs about reality. In contrast, epistemology is a prescription. It's prescriptive. A prescription about how people should acquire beliefs about something. It's prescriptive, it is normative. And that is quite different. That is more than just a mere description of the acquiring of knowledge. We find a quite similar situation in ethics. You, might, you will probably, of course, not be surprised that ethics is normative, This in contrast to some scientific disciplines which are also concerned with behavior. There is moral psychology, for instance, moral psychology, but there is also sociology and anthropology, and they're all about how people behave, how they morally behave, but again, they are descriptions of how people in fact morally behave, they do not prescribe how people should behave. There are no norms in there. There are only descriptions of norms, but there are no endorsement of norms. So both epistemology and ethics are normative disciplines, and that is what makes them especially philosophical. Here I say that this normative aspect is part of its object, some might say that it's more like the method of epistemology and ethics that is normative. I will stick to saying that it's part of the aspect of its object. It's the normative aspect of its object, because we will later talk about method, and that will be about quite different things. Metaphysics, then. This is about the ultimate being of such things as people and tables. However, don't we have physics, which is also about the ultimate reality? Tables are ultimately made out of molecules and atoms and electrons and you know, quarks, more ultimately. They also try to dig deeper and deeper in reality to check out what is the ultimate foundation of things. What is then the difference between metaphysics and why would we need metaphysics when we have such a decent empirical science called physics? Philosophers will answer that metaphysics is about quite something different. It's not about how microparticles or objects behave or move. And behave, I, I don't mean it in the sense of human behavior, you just move. It's not about a description of the dynamics of things, such as microparticles. It is about what things really are. And that is quite a different thing, according to metaphysicians. 
and they make it seem as if this question it's it's a deeper question this is quite superficial you check out how things behave you describe it and behavior is it's something which you observe in quite a straightforward manner not so straightforward when you have to use fancy microscopes to dig into very deep stuff but still they believe it's quite superficial a deeper truth concerns what things really are and microscopes will not help there this is sometimes used as an excuse um, you know against criticisms take for instance the metaphysician Thales he was an ancient Greek philosopher Thales whom you might know from elementary geometry from Thales theorem and Thales believed that ultimately everything is made of water as a fundamental element of it all now you might reply well mr. Thales my water is made of water but my glass is made of glass Thales then might cleverly reply well your glass seems to be made of glass but ultimately it's a kind of solidification of water ultimately it's made of water you might then reply hey I come from the 20 or 21st century and in there we have analyzed these things and come to the conclusion that they are made from different chemical elements the one is made from silica the other is made from let's say H2O Thales if he were a contemporary metaphysician metaphysician might still reply well that is perhaps possible but when I say that everything is made of water I meant it in a metaphysical way metaphysical it's something beyond the physical it's something deeper some deeper truth sometimes this is really used as an excuse right you have some valid criticism and then they come up with this stuff I mean I mean it in a metaphysical way so you can doubt whether this is really the way to go in science however you can use this trick now yourself right if your girlfriend says you said I looked fat in that dress right something like that you said I looked fat in that dress now you can reply I meant that in a metaphysical way okay so as I said you can you can doubt the value of such replies and in general as a homework for this lesson I would want you to um, ask yourself the question normative issues like in epistemology and ethics and metaphysical issues are these really legitimate objects of science or of inquiry can we really have theories about them 